So now we know from calculating the standard free energy for the combustion of glucose to carbon dioxide and water, uh, we know that from calculating and finding that the uh, free energy term is very negative, so at negative 2,879 kilojoules per mole. But when we want to look at a reaction, to, uh, we also want to figure out why it's favorable. Why are the products favored? Or conversely, why would the reactants be favored in certain reactions? And so we want to look at two terms that actually compose free energy. So that's stated by this equation here, where the standard free energy is equal to the standard enthalpy change uh, minus the temperature, T, times uh, the standard change in entropy, which is delta S. And so we're going to define some terms. So first, uh, if delta G, if the change in the free energy is less than zero, we call that exergonic. Whereas if delta G is greater than zero, this is endergonic. And remember that exergonic reactions are spontaneous or uh, product favored. The second term is the enthalpy term. Call that enthalpy. If delta H is less than zero, this is exothermic. If it's instead greater than zero, this is endothermic. The final term is the entropy term. And note that the entropy term, delta S, is multiplied by temperature. And we'll get to uh, why that's important uh, uh, later on in the lecture. So <clears throat> one way uh, that entropy is commonly defined is as a measure of disorder. Now, that's not a uh, great definition, but one way uh, you can see if something that's entropically favored is that are there more product molecules than there are reactant molecules? Are you creating more quote-unquote disorder? And so when we go back and we look at the glucose reaction and we see the very negative delta G value, uh, we, can, we can sort of uh, try to figure out why this delta G value is so negative. And part of that is because both the enthalpy term and the entropy term uh, are favored. So as we know, for combustion, you release a lot of heat. Think of uh, burning wood or burning a piece of paper, uh, that, which is a, uh, one form of a combustion reaction. In the same way, glucose uh, burning uh, with oxygen as the oxidant forms carbon dioxide and water. We know that's going to release a lot of heat. So we know that delta H um, is going to be uh, very high, and so that's going to be an exothermic reaction. Delta H is going to be negative. The entropic term we can look at, again, by looking at, in this case, we can look at the number of product molecules, which in this case is 12, versus the number of reactant molecules, which is 7. So we take 7 molecules in reactant side, and we turn it into 12. So this increase means that we have an increase in entropy. So delta S, in this case, is going to be greater than zero, which means that negative T delta S is going to be less than zero. So when both the enthalpy and the entropic terms are negative, 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 delta G is going to be less than zero. Now, if you think about this reaction in the reverse, where carbon dioxide and water react to form oxygen and glucose, you reverse the signs of everything. So in this case, this would be an endothermic reaction and entropically disfavored, because you're going from 12 molecules to 7 molecules. In that case, both signs will be positive, 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 and delta G will be greater than zero. So we can see from those two, um, just from understanding what we know about the uh, heat release of this reaction 
and also uh, looking at the balanced equation, we can predict whether this reaction is going to be favorable towards carbon dioxide and water or towards glucose and O2. And of course the answer is it's going to be favorable towards uh, carbon dioxide and water.